everyone, my name's Elise and I'm from the blog Brace Yourself. A few weeks ago I saw a post asking for suggestions on makeup to wear at horse shows and um, I thought it would be interesting to incorporate my beauty YouTube side with my blog and love of horses and show you how to do a perfect makeup look, just very subtle for horse shows that's not going to come off when you're hot, sweaty and dirty so here we go i personally don't wear makeup to horse shows just because i have so much to do in the morning before i even go to the yard such as taking my painkillers and then i have to wait an hour for it to work so i don't have any opportunity to do any makeup at all if i want my horse to look presentable for shows instead of me so if you are one of those people who do wear makeup then this will be perfect for you and if you don't that's fine I don't either. The best way to start is always by washing your face. So I wash my face already with soap and I've exfoliated with a Clinique Sonic brush, I think it's called, and it makes it much better for your foundation will stay on better if you've got no oils on your face and everything's smooth and perfect. So to start with, we're gonna go and choose a primer. And a primer just fills in your pores and helps keep the foundation and base makeup on for longer. It's not necessary, but I personally find it helps a lot with longevity. So my favorite primer at the moment is the Professional by Benefit. If you want to use a drugstore version instead, the dupe for that would be the Baby Skin by Maybelline. But for today, I'm going to be using the Benefit Professional. I'm just going to take a pea-sized blob of the Professional and dab it into my face. You don't want to rub because it will just rub up all your skin that you've exfoliated before. I'm going to take about this amount and then I'm just going to tap it between my fingers and put it on my nose, cheeks, chin, forehead and then the remainder on the rest of my cheeks. So once that's blended out and sitting nice, it may feel a bit greasy, so all you've got to do is wait just a few minutes for it to set down a little bit more before doing your next step, which is foundation. Now choosing your foundation is very much a personal choice on skin type as well and what sort of finish you like. For sporty events or hard work like horse riding, I'd suggest going for a more matte base, but if you have dry skin, you can always add something that's a little bit more luminizing and lighter in texture. So I personally have drier skin, but I find my favorite matte foundation is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Makeup. And because I'm pale as hell, because I never leave the house except to do the horses, I tend to mix it with a tiny drop of Illamasqua foundation just to lighten the color up a bit. The drugstore versions, if you're looking out for a cheaper foundation, I'd suggest the Revlon Color Stay and I've got one for dry skin, but they also do one for oily skin, and it's amazing. I use it for everyday makeup too, it's so good. So I'm going to do my maxing, mixing and matching of these two. So the next thing is what brush to use with your foundation. I personally always use the Sigma F80, which is the flat top Kabuki. But again, this is an expensive option, and there's one that's just as good as the drugstore, which is the Real Techniques expert face brush and it's just as good as blending foundation out and if you're not a brush person then I suggest taking a damp beauty blender. I'm going to try and use all drugstore brushes for this tutorial just because it's cheaper and then I'm going to just put it on my face starting from the cheeks and just gently blending it in and don't forget to blend onto the ears and also don't forget to blend into the hairline and down the neck too. Now I'm going to add a little bit more just because I didn't use much at all. You can always add, but you can't take away. I'm going to go in with my beauty blender now just to make sure there's no brush marks left. And you want to gently bounce this on your face. You don't want to pull because it will move your makeup and then you will lose the coverage. So once that's fully blended, we can now move on to the next step, which is concealer. My favorite option for concealer is the YSL Touche Clat um, Concealer. And this is a really, really nice um, concealer just for a lighter coverage, but it still covers anything you don't want, like dark circles. Now for the drugstore options, you can order this online and it's only six quid, if that. 
and it's the LA Girl Pro Conceal Concealer. But today I'm going to go with the YSL Concealer. And you want to put this on in a triangle shape. You don't want to just swipe underneath because then you'll get a weird circle. A tiny bit on the chin, forehead, and just because I can, just slight bit down the nose. And now I'm going to blend this out with my beauty blender again. Now that I've blended the concealer out, I'm going to set my entire face with powder. So to set my foundation, I'm going to use the Stay Matte by Rimmel, and this is just my all-round favourite. I've gone through so many of these, and it's from the drugstore. It's super cheap and affordable. And with that one, I'm going to use my Real Techniques blush brush. But to set my under eyes, just because I'm bougie, I'm going to use a little bit of a banana powder from the NYX Contour Kit. This is a Morphe pointed contour brush and it's just tapered at the end. So what I recommend doing is blending out your under eyes and again just make sure there's no creases and then dabbing the powder on top. Make sure you get right up into your under eyes so it won't crease later. And only dab this, you don't want to swipe because that will again move your concealer and you want to set your eyelids too. And now to set the rest of my face, I'm going to go with my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder and my Real Techniques Blush Brush. And I'm just going to swirl this gently all over my face. Don't forget to tap off the excess product, you don't want to use too much. And set those ears. And don't forget your neck too. Anywhere you've put foundation or concealer needs to be set, otherwise it's going to move and look terrible when you're sweating. So the next step is eyebrows. Now this is an optional step because everyone has different brow types and has different styles that they prefer. So if you want to fill them in, do them to your own specifications and how you like them. I personally have been blessed with great natural eyebrows so all I'm going to do is wipe off the foundation that got on them and just brush some Benefit Gel through them. So the Benefit Gel is the only brow, clear brow gel I have found that will literally act like hair gel. Your eyebrows will not be moving anywhere, no matter how much you get smushed against a horse, they will stay in place and they will look good all day. So the next step is now to warm up your face, you've put on all this solid coloured foundation and you look flat and it's not a good look. So I'm going to start by bronzing and for the sake of this video and using drugstore products I'm going to dip back into that NYX contour palette and choose the bronzer shades. Now I'm going to choose one of the lighter shades just so it's a little bit warmer. I'm going to use my blush brush from Real Techniques again. Now the areas you want to bronze are your cheek here, up to your temples, cheek again and then jawline and then you can add a little bit on your nose to bring it all together. Um, to do my nose I'm just going to use a slightly thinner brush and this is from Avon and I'm going to use the same powder and just go down the sides of my nose and this does nothing except again make my nose look smaller. Next step for the face is using blush. Um, again this is a personal preference not all people like wearing well blush but I think again it brings a little bit of colour back to the face along with the bronzer. So I don't own many drugstore blushes just because I never bought them in drugstore but there are, I like the L'Oreal blush which is very good. But for now I'm going to be using the Makeup Geek blush pan in Heartthrob. This is just a random brush that my brother bought home from me from his work because they had leftovers so he gave me this one. I have no idea what brand it is. It says UBU on it, number 10. It's just a soft pretty pink powder brush and I'm going to dip into gently into the pan and just put a tiny bit along my cheekbone. See? Blush is very easy to overdo, I barely tapped into that. And then you want to smile and dab a little bit on the apples of your cheek and blend backwards and into your temple. Okay so now you've done your full base makeup, the best thing to do now is set it with setting spray. Now this is a really important step if you're going to wear your makeup when you're with your horse 
anywhere sweaty, sports, anything, or on a hot day, this is so important, and I have two I'm going to recommend. There's the L'Oreal Infallible Fixing Mist, which is a drugstore affordable one. I think this was about £12, but I'll put the links below in my description box. And then there's my all-round favourite, which is the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. And this is the best, like, you can't go wrong with it. So before spraying your face with the Fixing Mist, what I suggest is making sure everything's blended with your beauty blender, just make sure your under eyes aren't creased because once this is set, you can't change anything. And hold it away from your face and just spray it all around. And what I like to do is take my beauty blender and just press the product back into your face. And I find this helps just because otherwise you'll feel the mist sits on top of your face and clings to the baby hairs on your face too. So you just want to push it into the makeup just to make sure it's fully set. For the last step, I'm just going to do a little bit on the eyes. You don't want to wear too much. You just want to accentuate your natural eye shape. So to do that, I'm going to take the actual bronzer that I used on my face, which was the next one. And I'm going to take a little eyeshadow blending brush. It's the Deluxe Crease Brush. So I suggest starting at your outer corner so that's where the most pigment goes and gently blending it into your inner corner you can build this up to your liking and your eye shape and join it with the outer part of your eye here and blend it upwards now to finish off the eyeshadow I'm going to go in with the same brush, same colour and just connect it underneath my lower lash line So that's all you need to do for the eyeshadow and to finish it off I'm going to curl my lashes and do mascara. So for mascara I'm going to be using Benefit Their Real which is my favourite mascara and this is the waterproof version so if your eyes water, you're sweating, you're not going to look like a panda and I promise you this will work. For the drugstore my favourite is The Last Sensational by Maybelline. And this is also a waterproof version of it because you don't want it all down your face. But first I'm going to take a pair of eyelash curlers and gently curl my upper lashes. I'm not going to do the bottom lash on this one yet until it's dry because if you start looking up you're going to get it all over your eyelid. And I do that all the time and it's awful. And because it's waterproof, it's hard to get off, so you don't want to make mistakes with this one. And you want to wiggle it through your eyelashes to separate them. I like to concentrate the mascara onto the outer lashes just so they flare out a bit more. It just suits my eye shape better. Whilst the upper mascara you've just put on is setting, just be very careful not to look up or down or move or breathe. Just don't do anything and you won't end up looking like a raccoon. So once that is dry, I actually have a mini version of the same mascara. Um, it's just a travel size pot and I found this so much easier to do my lower lashes with because it's a smaller little one. One thing I like to do just before my upper lashes is completely dry is take the back of any small eyebrow, eye brush, just anything, and push them upwards. You can just use your finger if you want to, and this just helps them dry, curled upwards. And it just helps them curl, because I've got really straight upper lashes. For the very, very last step, you have the issue of, do I wear lipstick? Do I not wear lipstick? Now what I suggest is, don't go near lip balm, don't go near lip gloss, don't do anything that stays wet or shiny, because you will make the mistake if you do that and you'll end up with straw attached to you, dirt, hair, horses, your actual hair will get in your mouth and you can never get it out and it is the most annoying thing in the world. So just don't wear lip balm, even though it's pretty and natural, just don't do it at all. So what I suggest if you do want to wear lipstick, I'd go for a nude matte colour. My favourite nude matte lipstick is from Huda Beauty and it is the mini matte liquid matte in Bombshell. For drugstore, I haven't actually found a nude matte colour that dries down completely. They say they're matte, but they stay slightly sticky and nasty. But So right now, all I'm going to do is wipe any excess foundation that's stuck to my lips. You don't actually have to do this. Sometimes people prefer to put lipstick straight on top of foundation lips. 
because it kind of cancels out your natural colour of your lips. But I find it kind of makes it a little bit clumpy on me, it's just personal preference. Now I'm just going to take the lipstick and carefully apply it. So this is the lipstick with just one tiny coat. You literally don't even need to double dip or anything. I wiped all the excess off and it does an entire lip. Now if you're like me and you love a bit of glam makeup, what you can do is add a tiny bit of highlighter on your cheekbones. And I suggest not doing too much because if you are going to get sweaty and hot, you're going to get a bit glowier. But I can't live without highlighter. And my go-to is the Champagne Pop by Becca Cosmetics. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to spray my face one more time with setting spray just to make sure everything is completely set down, it's not going to move and it's going to look flawless all day. And then I'm going to gently apply a small amount of the highlighter with a little Sigma brush on my cheekbones. My favourite brush to apply highlighter is the Sigma FO3 brush. But you can literally use any face brush that's small or a blending eyeshadow brush, literally anything to apply it. So first I'm going to spray my face with the setting mist again. Then I'm going to let it dry down just a little bit and then whilst it's still slightly tacky I'm going to apply my highlighter to my cheekbones. I'm going to bring it up under my eyebrow and join it in a C shape. And then, just to bring it all together, I'm going to add a little bit on my cupid's bow. And just a tiny bit on the end of my nose, which just makes it, again, helps my nose look a little bit narrower. And then I'm going to take one of my blending brushes and just blend my entire face out again. And now our full face of makeup is finished. Now to show you what it looks like if you were wearing your show gear, I'm just going to put my show gear on, my helmet, my hair net, everything. Of course it can't be show ready without my sand shield helmet. Thank you for watching my video on how to do simple show makeup for all showy occasions and this is the final look. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed my video. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and follow my blog Brace Yourself on Facebook and WordPress. Thank you for watching. Bye!